Okay, one of the things we're going to look at now is uh, perfect competition and looking at the structure of the diagram and how we can use the diagrams in our discussions within our essays to help with our uh, analysis. Now, as you remember from class, one of the first things we always looked at was that perfect competition, we had a two-pane analysis. The diagram to the left being the industry and then the diagram then to the right being for the firm. Always make sure to label those diagrams both industry and firm. Normally always good practice to do the industry to the left hand side of your uh, two pin analysis and then the firm then to the right. Uh, labeling then our axes we have just simply then price uh, for the industry um, and quantity under zero in the corner. Uh, for the firm then we look at costs, revenues uh, and profit uh, as well. And on our x-axis then simply we also look at um, quantity. For our diagram then to the left for the industry, with perfect competition we say that there is a small, no uh, sorry, a large number of um, small firms. All firms will be small relative to the size of the industry, so it's a very large industry whenever we look at perfect competition. Perfect competition for the industry is very basic to your supply and demand diagrams that you might remember from AS. Um, so simply it is our downward sloping um, demand curve for the market and our upward sloping um, supply curve. Okay. Um, on that diagram, first thing you should do then, ultimately then label your um, price with your dash lines and your quantity with your dashed lines. We're going to do that as um, P1 and Q1. Now this shows the price set by the free market forces of supply and demand in the industry. With perfect competition, you remember, we said that the firm was a price taker, so the price is determined by the industry, by the forces, the free market forces of um, supply and uh, demand. Now, we say the firm is a price taker, as in with monopoly, for example, we say the, per, uh, the firm is a price maker. So with perfect competition, they must accept the price set by the market forces of supply and demand. So how do we show that now um, for the firm? This diagram to the right hand side um, is always a more trickier diagram and the easier, sort of the, the one that students mostly um, get confused with or we sort of mess up with how we label or how we do different points. So we'll go through this one now step um, by step. Whenever we said set by the market forces, the price is determined by the industry, we must show that perfectly elastic um, demand curve. Okay, so we get our ruler and simply from the equilibrium point, always good to do a dashed line from this because this isn't actually a curve. As soon as you hit now the y-axis of the firm diagram, just a straight line across, okay, perfectly elastic curve. How we label then that curve, it indicates price because it's set by the market forces, by P1 over here, um, set by the market forces of supply and demand. Price equals demand, you remember back from AS, this is a demand curve, so price equals demand. It also equals average revenue and also equals marginal revenue. So you're ultimately showing four things on one curve. Now, notably for um, A2 economics and for the AQA specification, what we are most interested in is this concept here of uh, MR, which stands for marginal revenue. Okay, and we need to know that because of the profit maximization rule, where MR equals MC. So what more can we add now to this diagram? Well, a few things we can add on. Um, first and foremost, we need to add on our MC curve, which is in the shape of a tick, as we already know now at this stage. Always a hint for the exam, every curve that you draw, just simply label it as you finish it. Okay, so once you do the supply curve, label it. Once you do the demand curve, label it MC curve, just label it straight away. Now. You will know already straight away, we can see the MR equals the MC um, curve, our profit maximization point. Um, go ahead now and do that dash line. MR equals MC. Okay, we'll do that as Q1. Um, PM, profit maximization, uh, equals when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Constantly reiterate that in your um, responses in your exams, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. It can also help you to make reference to your diagram. Okay, we can even call that point A if um, we wish. Now, whenever we're looking at our diagrams, obviously we can show marginal cost 
um, and demand, uh, etc. But we are interested in this degree of profit because we believe that all firms um, be in profit maximizers. And we want to see, well, exactly if they make a profit, how do we illustrate this concept of um, a profit? One last curve we need to add on to this now is our average cost curve. Okay, and that's a U shaped curve. Now, one of the key things you must remember with the average cost curve is that the lowest point of the ATC curve must cut the MC curve. Okay, so at the lowest point of your ATC curve, that should hit or cut through the MC curve, as I'm going to draw now. Okay, so lowest point, which is just heading here. As soon as I hit that point, I'm going to go now straight up, and that's our ATC curve. Okay, and we need to know that to show um, the area of, pro of uh, supernormal profit. Okay, now, how we show this area now of um, supernormal profit. On your diagram, get your ruler. Now, this is where, again, some students mess up um, doing things slightly differently. There's only one point here that we are interested in, and that's the profit maximization point. A Q1, that is the point that the firm will sell at in order to maximize their profits. Now, straight away, without even labeling anything on this diagram, we can sense and even we can tell that the firm is uh, making a supernormal profit. The reason for that is because the ATC curve, the lowest point of the ATC curve, is below the price equals demand equals AR equals MR curve. Okay? So if that lowest point is below this curve, the firm is making a supernormal profit. So how do we show that supernormal profit? We go to our point of profit maximization when MC equals MR, move down until this dash line hits with the ATC curve. Okay? At that point, okay, at this dash line, move across to your y-axis, okay, and just do another dash line across here. Now, this isn't a curve, hence why we do a dash line. That's why we use dash lines in economics um, to indicate that the line we're drawing is not actually um, a curve. Now, you don't have different color pens in the exam. You won't be awarded if you do it in different color pens. Do not spend 50 minutes um, drawing lovely, neat um, diagrams. Obviously, keep them neat, but also practice on how quickly you can do them. I'm just going to shade in here this area in red. Okay, the reason I'm shading that in is because this area is our area of supernormal profits. Now, again, another hint for you for the exam. Think about it logically. Do not title it as SN profits. Okay, you know already you shouldn't do that. This is an area of supernormal profits, so label it properly. Okay, you can either label it in here or put an arrow from it. Um, I'm going to label it in here. So, super normal. Profit. Okay. Now, always a good diagram to draw for your exam um, because it shows quite a lot. These diagrams, again, as I said to you before, diagrams in economics um, can help us with a lot of things. Diagram to the left showing the industry. It shows price determination. That's one of the reasons um, why we study perfect competition is how price is determined in a particular type of industry. The diagram to the right, then, it's showing us the individual firm. Okay, so in perfect competition, there are a large number of um, small firms. Each firm is small relative to the size of the industry. We are interested in this concept of all firms being profit maximizers, which we have seen, shown here to be true. This firm is operating at a point A and a Q1 uh, and a P1, which is the profit maximizing level of output. We're interested in the nature of the industry. So this is a perfectly competitive firm. You will know at this stage all your different characteristics, your um, low bars to entry and exit, fully mobile factors of production. This firm, individual firm, they are making a profit. Okay, And the behavior of this firm is that they are a profit maximizer in an industry where they cannot set prices. Okay, And as again, the goods are, uh, are uh, homogenous. They are undifferentiated. Going back to the video that we watched at the very start of the year, we said that one farmer's onions was the same as another uh, farmer's onions. The goods are homogenous. Um, they are undifferentiated. The firm will not use this supernormal profit to reinvest into dynamic efficiency, for example, because there is no point of them doing that. Perfect competition, a very volatile and uncertain um, market structure. One minute this firm is making a supernormal profit. This supernormal profit, and this is key sort of to develop in your analysis, is that although in the short run the firm is making a supernormal profit, in the long run they will only make a normal profit, and we'll show that next. This supernormal profit then acts as an incentive for new firms to enter the industry. And as a result then, supply will increase 
pushing down this price equals demand equals AR equals MR. So this curve here, it's now pushed downwards because of the changes in price determination in the industry. Okay. Now, whenever you're drawing these diagrams, you shouldn't be spending too long drawing them. Um, again, you've you, you know you have got two diagrams here, so there's a lot that you can discuss. Key points is price determination and profit maximization. And with this, in a nutshell, with perfect competition, the firm cannot determine its price. It must accept price. But how does it make profit? How does it make a profit based on the fact that it cannot determine price? Okay. Before I finish this video, um, just a few, again, gentle reminders about what you have to do for the exam or what you need to do with these um, diagrams. Labeling your diagrams, get yourself into the habit, self-discipline. As soon as you draw the axes, label them, price, quantity, etc. All other diagrams for Econ 3, Econ 4, whatever, make sure that you label your diagrams. As soon as you draw the axes, label the the uh, label the, um, la actually label the axes. Every curve that you draw, label it. Okay, You will be marked down if you don't label your curves. Always indicate which is the industry, which is the firm. Now, whenever an examiner is marking your answers, they will know which one's the industry, they will know which one's the firm, but it always just shows that deeper understanding of the concepts of perfect competition. Again, this concept here, MR, MC, this is essential because we need to show that profit maximizing level of output, so we must obviously label MC and um, MR. You don't necessarily need to know the reason as to why the MC is that shape, um, as long as you know that MC equals MR, the profit maximizing rule, and shading in this area of supernova profit. Uh, what you could do maybe is just label that as supernova profit, and then in your responses say that this firm makes a supernova profit as shown in the diagram. Um, you could look at this concept of prices determined by the industry as illustrated from the diagram to the left above, okay, which is this diagram here. And then you would talk about um, the attitudes, maybe then, of this firm. Key thing with um, perfect competition, to help you with your analysis, at this stage you should know now all your characteristics of perfect competition. In a situation like, that, like this, um, use those characteristics to form and develop your analysis. I'm not going to go over them because this is just uh, a concept of looking at the diagrams. But you should know them now at this stage to support you with um, your answers.